Um, hello, guys. Good evening. Hello, Emerson, Carlos, and Jose Carlos. Hello, hello. Are you there? Good evening. Sorry, uh, I I had um, you know issues here with my microphone. So welcome to everyone uh, to our English class. It's a great chance to be here with all of you. Always with the most important goals to learn English and maximize your skills. That's one of the things we need to reach. And um, let's see. Uh, hi, Emerson. Hello, teacher. How are you? Very fine. I'm okay. ready to, to start. Excellent. That's very important. How was your day? Um, it was a uh, little relaxed, maybe. Oh, great. So you had a good time? Yes. Uh, that's very important. You know, this week has gone so fast. You know, time goes so fast nowadays. And uh, yeah, right. What about Jose Carlos? Hi, Jose Carlos. Welcome. Thank you. So, how was your day? Uh, so far, so good. Everything was relaxed. Just relax. That's great. So, uh, yeah. how was your job? Like, countdown? Yes, nothing, nothing important. Nothing important. It's a normal day. It's normally okay. That's good, right? So you take advantage of all that. Uh, perhaps you won't. You understand that sometimes we have like some uh, challenging days, to, uh, perhaps more difficult or with a lot of things to do than others, and that happens, right? And you know that's the reason the work we have, especially what what is like the the most like the what are the busiest days during the week. Sometimes mm -hmm. on Fridays, Thursdays. In my case, Monday and Tuesday are the most are the busiest days. You have a lot of things to do. What about yes. Friday? Mm, no, not in my case. Okay, and do you, you I focus? Do? I focus on the three days, the three first day of the week. Okay, to reach the goal for my week. Okay, that's the so third day and Friday is a little bit easier. Oh, cool. And um, well, do you work Saturdays or weekend? No, only Monday to Friday. Oh, that is a great schedule. So you have weekend off. That's good. Yes. What about you, Emerson? Do you work on, on weekends? Um, Only Saturday, the middle time. Oh, Saturday morning, we could say. Okay, that is a, an acceptable schedule, right? Yes, it's very relaxed. That's we have cool. a, a free time. That that's really important. Yeah, after a long shift, we need to take a short time to you know enjoy, do something different from work. Uh, I'm surprised because I, I know a lot of people who work all the time. They become workaholic. Work Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, Sundays, and they work all the time. Obviously, there are needs that we understand that, but but we need to also take a short time to rest because we're doing a lot of things. To, that we need to at least take a time to relax, to do something different, entertaining, because it's not working all the time. Yeah, so do any of you work until 6 p.m. or before 6, 5, 4 p.m.? Uh, in my case, yes, three days a, a week, but because I have two jobs for that reason. Oh. So I start on 5 p.m. and I end up 7 and 50 or 7 and half p.m. Wow, it's very late. Yes. Yeah, it's very challenging this schedule, but you're familiar with that. So it's normal for you to have this. Schedule. Yes, both jobs are almost the same things. Okay. That's... In both companies, it's almost the same. It's almost the same. Okay, that's good. And what about you, Sifrida? What's your schedule? The teacher um, usually is from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. 7 to 5? It's, yeah, it's yeah, a little... Monday to Friday. Yeah, it's a little challenging schedule, right? 
Um, yeah, it's like 44 hours per week. So it's okay for you. Yeah, it's okay. I prefer to do that uh, instead of work midnight of Saturdays. Okay, that that's good. All right, so that yeah, that's important. We are adapted to different schedules. Yes, um, you know, every time we have to adapt to the schedules. In my case, this year, um, because I'm almost on vacation because of my job, and um, because I have the two jobs, and uh, my, my my first job is like. I take a full time shift until six thirty p.m. or every day, Monday to Fridays. But now I just work uh, uh, half a day, so we're talking about three until two or three p.m. But schedule is a little bit challenging. You have to be active with a lot of energy, so that's the, that's the goal. Okay, so welcome to everyone. I know that there are more students right now in the class. And uh, I have already sent also the presentation that we'll use for this class today. And uh, well, we had a good time. We had a great conversation yesterday. And most of you took a time to analyze some questions and talk about those questions for your class related to your personal experience. And I would like to ask you guys, and uh, what did we talk about yesterday? Who wants to break the ice and tell me, teacher William, and yesterday we did this in the class. You can help me to describe what you did yesterday. Who wants to break the ice? Yes, yeah, so who wants to be the volunteer? <laughs> Tell me what we did. Yes, Songwon? Uh, good evening, teacher. I remember yesterday we discussed uh, uh, about uh, the mean uh, million, millennials, also the characteristics. Yes. And more things. Thank you so much. Yes, we we're talking about millennials, right? And that is... Um... One of the things that we were discussing about the, the challenges, the ages. Do you remember the ages of this generation? Do you remember when do they start it or when do they start and when they finish the, the, the time? I remember uh, was the uh, the people was born before were they born? They were born? They were born uh, in the 80s 80s until I know. 96. 96 or 95 96 oh 96 so yeah so imagine the, the the generation the millennials so i know that most of you are millennials sefrida are you uh, no. If we follow the IT documentation about some millennials uh, born before 1994 and not millennial, but if you take uh, the date of 1996, I am a millennial. You're a millennial? Emerson? Yeah. Oh, okay. Emerson, too, right? Yes, I am. And uh, Jose <laughs> Carlos? Yes, you too. I'm millennials. Uh, what about Kevin? Are, are you millennial? Uh, I'm born in uh, 1997. I, I don't know. He's not, right? 1997? 1997. I think he's not. No, he's not. Z? Because it's until 1995 or six. And you're 97, mm. right? So I think yes. he's not. Um, um, what is my my range? My, or yeah, my, the generation, uh, the generation. Not my generation. Mm, we need to check because I was like. Um, I, I think that he belongs to Generation Z. Ah, Generation Z. Okay. Yeah, I just got inf this information here, but 
I don't know, but I don't find it here. I don't know why about this generation. So we were going to be checking that. Okay, so it's really important to talk about the generations. The Generation C is, yes, the Generation C is born in 1997 until 2012 or 2012. Okay. So in that case, Kevin, or uh, originally, generation C. yeah, your Generation okay. C, because Millennials it started in 1981 until 1996. And there, there is a Generation X before the Millennials. The Generation X born in 1965 until 1980. Imagine. What about Osman? What generation are you? I'm I'm Generation X. Ah, okay. The from 1965 until 1980, right? Yes. Oh, yes. cool. That that's great. Okay. Um. Yeah, that's really important. Yeah, I can see also the difference about ages. And before the generation um X, we're talking about 1946 until 1964, are what many people know as baby boomers. This generation is very recognized for those uh, for a lot of changes in the society. The experience so we're talking about the baby boomers. Before the baby boomers, there was a generation called silent generation. Imagine, so we're talking about silent generation that is started in 1925 to 1945. And the first, listen up, the first um, generation, what I understand here, listen up the name about this generation, the greatest generation, look at this name. The greatest generation. We're talking about born in 1901 until 1924. So we're talking about the last seven generations. Until now, we're talking about 2023. 20, this the last generation is the generation alpha. Started on 2013 until 2025. Okay, so that's meaning two, two more years, there is going to be a new generation. Interesting, right? So we're talking about uh, until 2025, the generation alpha. So seven generations specifically. Questions, do you know about this generation or you didn't know about it? Really, I didn't know about the Generation Alpha. Mm -hmm. And you told us um, that that it is since uh, 2013 or 2015. Uh, the Alpha, uh, 13, yes. 2013. 2013 is... Uh, alpha. Is before, is after, excuse me, is after of Generation C. Uh, after. Okay. Uh, uh, and my generation is Generation C. Yes. That since um, 1997 until 2012, right? It's, it's, an, it's a good topic. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, because perhaps many of us we didn't know about the differences in the generation. And yeah, so uh, there were some specific characteristics for each for each generation. And um I'm going to be honest with you guys, I knew about the baby boomers, about millennials, generation X, silent, but I didn't know about the last generation. We're talking about the alpha generation. So there are different characteristics for this generation. And um, it's very interesting because we are like talking about the new changes that this generation um, also had, right? So that's something uh, peculiar, right? That we can also socialize. Well, also we were talking about millennials. We're talking about some personal characteristics that millennials have and 
we didn't conclude in one exercise related to a quiz. We had to um, uh, develop a quiz or complete a quiz about millennials. The topic was, uh, are you the generation? So that was the question. So there is a kind of, let me see if I can share with you right now. I'm sorry. Um, one moment. Um, there were some, let's see, Generation X. One moment, please. I was looking for the last presentation we had and because there were some valuable details about millennials. I would like to ask you the next question, well, the questions. Did you complete the, the quiz about millennials? Did you complete the quiz or you were in the process? I'm in the process, in the process, teacher. I'm completing it right now. And what about you guys? The Hello? One second. I was I was looking for a link. And the team uh this generation. Teacher, I, I remember this quiz uh we did yesterday. Exactly. Yes, and we were going to analyze the results about this quiz. So the question was, how millennials are you and the generation Y in the quiz, right? So, the generation, so there were some questions like, for example, describe your housing situation. And also there were some possible choices. How did you meet your significant others? What uh, do you fear most of old? Uh, you got a posh restaurant and what's the first thing you do when your meal arrives? And there were some possible answers. What is your favorite emoji? It's, it's Saturday night. What are your plans? So depending on that, so you were going to, you know, socialized or responded. That was the, the things that we did yesterday. So the question is, all of you finished this quiz? Yes. yes, all of you, right? Okay, so I would like to ask you, what results do you have? Jose Carlos, can you explain us that what was the result of the of the quiz? If that is possible, of course. Yes, Bishop, to be honest with you, yesterday I remember on 9 p.m. or 9 and 3 minutes p.m. I have an emergency. So somebody request if I have the time for for carry them to the hospital. So I have to leave the class as soon as uh, possible. And so I I don't remember this activity. Yeah. Okay. All right, I understand. What about Osman? Uh, what results do you have in the quiz? Um, Osman? Um, sorry, teacher. Uh, what, what, what result did you have in the quiz? What was the, the, the results after you completed the, the quiz? Teacher, I don't know, but I, I think I had I have a problem because I, I complete the quiz and then put a summit, but uh, don't, don't, don't give me... It didn't uh, give you the result. Don't give me her result. Yes, I, I don't know why. I don't know if my computer, my internet, but I but I try in this moment again. Okay, and what about Emerson? What do you get? Uh, what results do you get from the quiz? Uh, the res resulting is so funny because result is I am a millennial when tendons are having the, the generation. Yay. 
<laughs> like the combination of, I mean, yeah. in a combination with a different generation. Okay. And that is comprehensible because, for example, there are some people that they have uh, lived with people from other generations. And also we have some likes and dislikes. For example, do you like classical music? Yes, teacher. I love classic, classical music. I'm, I'm millennial because according to the year that I, I born in the 80s and is it the I, in, in the, the study or the or the age is I'm millennial. But in my result, it was funny because you are a baby boomer, say, and millennials <laughs> maybe buffle you with their habits and the infuri team fashion shows. This is the, the result of my, my quiz, but I love that classic music and I prefer staying in a quiet or in a, in, no, in a discotheque with boom, boom, boom. I prefer that classic yeah. music or, or relaxing, but it's, it, it's funny because in the, the age, the, the range of the, the year that I born is, I, I am millennial. <laughs> Yeah, that's impressive because baby boomers is between nine nineteen uh forty six and nineteen sixty four. Exactly, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, sometimes happen, and perhaps there is an explanation about it, because we have lived with people from those past generations, and we get, uh, because for for us it was familiar, and we have some attitudes, some behavior, from our um you know from people from that age. For example, my parents. There were some things uh, that I like about the past generations, like baby boomers, that was like very common, or even though the generation X. And um, because of my, my my sister and brothers, because of my parents, because they, they do this one or they did this one. So you get familiar and you adapt to those changes. That's why some of you had a different results. For example, millennials plus some characteristics of uh, previous uh, generations. And that's good because it's we, we know a lot about that. Okay, I was checking some students are joining the class right now. See, okay, much better now. So that was the question. So we could identify about millennials and uh, how important it's to know about that. All right. So let's continue with the next part of the class. I don't know if can you see the presentation. Yes, teacher. Okay, perfect. Thanks. All right. Let's see. We'll continue with the um, with a uh, new vocabulary because we have the chance also in the review to talk about some personal characteristics, about millennials, about some entity, personal entity things. So we describe some vocabulary about, um, oh, microphone sometimes. Yes. Uh, for example, we talk about some other important characteristics. And one of them was millennials self-entitled. Do you remember what was a self-entitled? We describe uh, about that. Do you remember what was that? The self-entitled? Do you? Uh, do you remember what was the self-entitled? Remember that all the words that we know or we study uh, we should know them. So we need sh we should know because it's useful, especially with English. Tell me with that. self entitlement teacher. Yes. Yes, is the individual feel they are on something simply because they exist? Exactly. So we're talking about that. And we talk about the self-center that we said that both of them have different, will have similar results, similar points to develop. And the last one, uh, fearfully ignorant. 
Do you remember, guys, what was uh, willfully ignorant? I remember that, that uh, those are the persons that decide not to learn something new. Aha. Uh -huh. So they were ignorant because they didn't want to learn. Because they decided, right, not to learn. Do you know people who have this adjective? Do you know people who uh, who has this kind of adjective? Yes, I have some co-workers that, that has that kind of thought. Okay, and also, for example, I know some some colleagues that they uh, they don't know English, and in that way, they have the opportunity, they have the resources, but they don't want to learn. And the problem is that they need to use English because in the job they do, it's a kind of requirement to know English. But the, the thing is that they are they don't want to learn, having the resources and the time to do that, but they don't want to do it. So that's what we call it, but it happens, right? Okay, let's continue with the next activity. Um, one second. And we have new vocabulary. So don't forget that these words that we are using, you don't have to forget them. Take notes in your notebook, in a, a song, somewhere else, and don't forget the meaning about this one. Because the purpose is that you enrich your vocabulary by practicing. Okay, we have the next uh, information. So Mirna, can you help me to read the instructions and the vocabulary, please? Okay. Uh, building vocabulary, go outline to find out more about key terms related to millennials at the workplace. Job hoppers, job tenures, stereotypes bust thank you so much yes so we have to look for the following vocabulary we have the ones that you mentioned like uh job hoppers the just hoppers and also the job tenured the stereotypes and bust right i want you to take a short time to um I look for online this vocabulary Right, especially key terms related to millennials. There is a connection of this vocabulary with uh, millennials at the workplace. So there, there is a, an important conjunction in that case of contents, right? So we're gonna start right now and I want you to complete it. I will give you uh, four minutes to check this information and then we're going to socialize the answers. Let's go then.
Okay, students, are you ready? So you have the meaning about the vocabulary? Yes, no? You ready? Just only means one. You're missing one. And uh, what about you guys? Sprito, Jose, Guzman? I'm ready, teacher. You're ready. Yes, I'm ready too. Perfect. That's important. So before that, we like move on to the breakup rooms and we know a little bit about these words. Uh, do you know the term, the definition about this vocabulary, or you haven't seen it before? It. Do you know the meaning of these words? In my case, no teacher. Okay. No. No teacher. Uh, yeah. There, well, so it's a very interesting vocabulary. <laughs> Because are it's not just simple words. Um, also, they are focused about jobs. They're focused about millennials, about generations. For example, the job hoopers. And this is a very interesting word because most of the time people do that one because they don't feel comfortable and they become job, job hoopers. And well, do you know the meaning? And then we are going to have like a short conclusion about that. So I want to give you a brief a couple of minutes to socialize with your partners about what you found. And then we're going to generalize, you know, in the plenary, what information you have and which ones are the correct one. So what I want you to do right now is to move on to the breakup rooms. We're going to take a short time to express what information you found for each word. For example, number one, what answer do you have? Oh, is this one. Number two, what's the meaning of this one? So you say that. So that's what we had to do. So we're going to create the breakup rooms right now. And I want you to accept the invitation. Look at your screen right now and accept the invitation to be in the groups. Okay, if someone has a problem to be in the groups, um, so we can move you to to rooms, okay? Because the purpose is all the best, we can, I don't know, be in the breakup rooms. That is the main goal. That all of all of you can participate actively in the conversations, and you can also practice. Sorry, teacher. I, was uh, I am alone. Yeah, I was going to move you to a different group when suddenly you call me. So, Jose Carlos, one second. Um, let's see. You are right here. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I know. Okay, you will be group number two. Good luck. Much better. So we'll see. We have uh, new students to join us in the breakout rooms. That's what we had to change right now. Let's see. Yes, this is a good group. Only one job. The job or something similar. Yeah, it's a characteristic that millennials maybe. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Okay, the next one is job tenure. Yeah. Tenure. Hmm. Okay, so definition has means that it is the length of time that a person works with for a particular employer or company. I think in Spanish will be something like el tiempo que has trabajado en la compañía. 
Yeah, it's long, it's long time that the employees typical have worked for a company for more than five years. I found that the while short tenure employees often have worked there for less than five years. Mm. You have to type maybe long tenure and, and short tenure. Mm. Yeah. Tenure. Mm. And you, Emerson? I have the same definition. Uh, no change a lot. Only I, I found it is a, a article say the tenure is declining now. More persons wants to worked for a long time in the same company, mm. according to the article. Okay. And the next one is st stereotypes. I found that the stereotype is a mistaken idea or belief many people have about a thing or group that is based upon how they look at the outside. And the groups are often stereotyped on the basis of sex, gender identity, race and et ethnicity, nationality, age, socioeconomic, status, language, and so forth. Stereotypes are deeply embedded with, within social institution and wider culture. This is the, the definition that I found in the stereotype. It is it's like a social problem that we have <laughs> in my simple words. <laughs> I don't know. And you see, Frido, what do you think about the stereotypes? <laughs> it's pretty simple. It's like the idea or ideas that people have about someone else is like, or who uh, this person is, and usually it's a wrong idea or set of ideas. And you, Emmons? Well, in my case, I have a definition say, as a preconceived notion about the person or group of people where I be we, something on fears believe that all the people or things with a particular characteristic <laughs> are the same. According to the, the business meanings. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a social problem that we have. <laughs> yeah. And the next one is... Okay. Uh, had like eight jobs, different jobs. That the ones okay. a lot of jobs. Okay. And what about for the second one? Second one, tenure, job ter tenure, employee tenure or job tenure is the length of time a person has worked for a particular employer. Uh, yes. I think it is the opposite. Yeah, and in that case, I found some additional. I find that it's the people who work for five years or more in a company. Yeah, I don't know yes. if do you find some similar, any similar? I found the same definition. These uh, job tenure are called uh, actives or activos. <laughs> Activo fijo de la compañía. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's uh, it's interesting this this uh, this meaning because uh, 
it's not easy are a job tenor and the jobs right now is is complicated if to found uh um a, a, a balance a balance yeah. to to in front of uh, your economy your time your responsibilities and when someone have five years or more is it's an it's nice it's, it's it's a great um adventure for the the people because it's not easy yeah i have something else there some human resource professionals usually categorize job tenure into two groups, long and short. I I think uh, it is like you said, Jose Carlos, that people that has, yes, five years or people that has, for example, in my company, the, the, it is a, a high stability job, so there are people that has 30, 35 years working there. Oof. A lot. Yes, a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's a lie. The, the company, no, really, the company gave them uh, uh, a gift, a special gift to be a lot of time there. Me. They personalize a, a watch and gave a title and I don't know something else in yeah. front of all all the person. Okay. Okay. In my in my case too, for example, in my team, uh, I have two person that have more than thirty year, and to be honest with you, one of them she. Her name is Luz de Maria. When I born, she feel the act. She feel my act. Yes. She was in this department in this moment. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there are some people that stay a lot in, in the job because they love them. They love it. Yes. And um, with, the, with the other one, stereotype. stereotype. Uh -huh. okay. It is an expectation that people might have about every person of a particular group. That's what I found. Yes. I find some similar that say that is the society instinctively for attribute to group of people and to classify them according to age, weight, occupation, skin color, gender, etc. I found this another definition. It's a mistaken idea or belief. Many people have about a thing or a group that is based upon how they look on the outside, which may be untrue, I'm not sure this pronunciation, or only partly true. It's, the, it's around the society. Yeah. The society. Maybe, uh, maybe it's, it's like some people categorize other people. I don't know. I don't know if if I am wrong, but it's a kind of judge the the person up for something peculiar. I don't know if I am a bad understanding. No, it's acceptable. The stereotypes and. Uh, one second. What about the last one? Um, like Boss. a verb, I found help 
or encourage something to increase or improve. Yeah. Rise by pushing from behind or below. Yeah, me too. Mm, yeah. That is a little confusing, right? <laughs> yes. Bust. Let me try again. Bust. I, I understand about the word boost like to improve something. Uh the synonym of it improve higher. Yes, is is to make it better. I, I don't know how to how to how to explain it. But boost is like making something uh even better. I don't know. Yes. It's the act to pull in something focus on improve or sorry, focus on promote. Okay, so we're gonna continue, guys. I think most of us right here. Um, also, I could listen. You know, many of you talking about this different vocabulary. We're going to socialize in the plenary. I will need uh, for students for helping me to share what you found or what did you discussed um, right now in the activity. Let's see. We have the first one: the job, the job hoopers. So tell me, guys, about the job hoopers. What do you find in that case? What do you get from that? Me, teacher. Yes, thank you. Uh, I found uh, it's the practice to changing your job very often. Exactly. That's right. It's 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 something that uh, for this generation, uh, it's very common. If you can see the examples, there are some people um, from prior generations that they have like 10, 20, 30 years in the same company. Have you heard about that? Um, oh, I have uh, 20 years working in this company. I have uh, 15 years. I have colleagues, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I have colleagues that they have 30 years in the company. That's incredible. They they, ha they have stayed for a long time in the company. But there are some people, millennials, that they decided, they see it, they have a job and automatically they change the job. And they say, well, there are better chances somewhere else and they move. Oh, there is a better schedule, I move. Oh, uh, there's the, the payment is even better that I move. So the insurance is much better, I move. Oh, maybe the career in the past. In this job, I'm going to be working in this area or oh, in this career path. Oh, this career path is good for me, so I'm going to move. So that's why a job hooper is like very common, especially with people who change jobs for benefits. That is a benefit for them. It's no bad at all. But we always have to think about the personal stability because you cannot 
be switching jobs very often. It looks like unstable um, career. Imagine you have a job and two years later, you change the job. And then two other later years, I will change the job. So, and this is the, we could have an advantage, but at the same time, this is advantage. That's what we know about job hoopers. What about the job tenure? What do you get from that uh, term? What can you say about the about this one? The job tenure. Is the opposite as job hopper? Is the length of time a person has worked for a particular employer? Is the length of time you said that an employee? Yeah. Okay. Okay, someone else has a comment about the job tenure? Not to try. I have the same, I, I found the same. Exactly, right. So in that case, we're talking about job tenures is about a time that a person has stays in a, in a company or in a job. So and um that's what we call a uh, people call job hopping. Yeah, because the time that they stayed in a job. If we have been like I have been for approximately two years and a half, I have been for around uh, six years uh, in the company. Oh, okay, that's what we call job tenure, right? That's um something important right? for a long, for a period of time. A uh, job tenure. So it's also important to understand that is the length of time, right? The length of time of an employee has worked for their employer. The length of time an employee has worked for their employer. Example, the average job tenure in the region has fallen from uh, to 90 months. That is the time, the length of time. Great job in that case. Let's see the next one. What about stereotypes? What do you match from stereotype and millennials? What relationship you found in the concept? Who wants to help me? Yes, a volunteer. I match uh, definition say uh, preconceived notion about the person or group or the people where we with something unfairly believes that all the people or things with a particular characteristic are the same. Okay, thank you so much. So that's mean that when we're talking about this stereotype, it's a mistaken idea about the other about the people. It's, it's not what they look like. It's like the, the image, right? How the person should be. And sometimes this is not the stereotypes, right? For example, oh, I'll give you one example about the, the last international event that happened in El Salvador. Do you remember? The last international event for women? Yeah, Miss Universe. Okay, we're talking about that many uh, participants. Well, this year there has been an exception. But in the previous um, contest, there there were there was a specific stereotype of women, right? Not all of them could participate. They should have some specific characteristics or stereotypes, but this is not necessary as it is. So, and also a stereotype is in that way, a mistaken idea or belief that many, many people have about things or group. That is the base open how they look on the outside. So that is something interesting about that. And let's see the last one, boost. What do you know about boost? To increase or improve something. Okay. Yes, to, to we can summarize as increase 
or improve, right? It's, it's something that perhaps can help us to increase our productivity, especially if we're talking in a job. So we're talking about boost, like the way how people can improve in some specific areas, and especially uh, millennials. The commitment they have for reaching something, right? So that is one of the valuable points of this. Okay, so any comments? If not, we're gonna take a short time to check the attendance list. So if you can allow me a moment, I'm going to check the attendance list. One second, please. Okay, you're listing your name, you say present. We call to Carlos Alberto Dominguez. Hey, Carlos Ernesto Hernandez. Carlos Ernesto Hernandez. It's not here. Hey, Edwin Antonio Quinteros. Present. Hey, Emerson Ulises Monroy. Present. Hey, Jorge Antonio Sanchez. Jorge, uh, Jose Bernardo Lopez. Present yeah. teacher. Thank you. What about Jose Carlos Argueta Romero? Present teacher, I'm here. Okay, thank you. Jose Salvador Bernal Quintanilla. Present teacher. Uh, Josman Atilio Serrano. Josman. Present. Uh, Juan Carlos Herrera. Present teacher. Um, Kevin Alfredo Lucero. Present. Um, Nelson Alberto Peraza. Present. Uh, Osman Enrique Hernandez. Present teacher. Thank you. Uh, Rafael Alexander Cerna. Present teacher. Thank you. Uh, Ricardo Ernesto Perez. Present teacher. Um, Sifrido Ernesto Gomez. Present teacher. And Wendy Maricela Ramirez. Good evening, present. Hello. Uh, Mirna Elizabeth. Present. And uh, Manuel Antonio. Present teacher. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, let's continue, guys, talking about the, you know, all these key terms. This is a very interesting vocabulary that we know. Well, um, after that, we have socialized a little bit about millennials and vocabulary about you know jobs hoopers job trainers stereotypes and boost we are going to study the, the next uh, grammar structures that is very simple and always focus on per conjunctions that one of the topics that we have the opportunity to practice the last class we had and how to use per conjunctions this is the part three and we have two connectors for this part we have uh, the either and or, or whether or, right? So look at examples. Look at examples in the box and then complete the exercise below. Either or presents a choice between the two options. The verb which follows the two subjects joined by or must agree with his second subject. So that's why it's highlighted. Look at the example here.
Okay, look at the examples. Uh, who wants to help me to read the examples, please? I need a volunteer. Yes, volunteer. Me, teacher. Yes. Uh, millennials are either self-entitled or self-centered. Uh, either John or Rick is going to prepare the progress report on the project. Exactly. So as you said, there are two choices, right? You present two choices or a choice between two options. The verbs which follow two subjects. Millennials are either self-entitled or self-centered. So if you saw in the last class that the we combine entitled and center both have the same meaning. And uh, how can we, what could be the meaning about either or, or in Spanish? Oh? Exactly. It's like we say, oh, oh. So like example, either uh, John or Rich, uh, Rick is going to prepare the progress report in the, process, in the projects. Or John or Rick, and to say oh, 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 that is the conjunction in Spanish. O John or Ricky van a preparar el progreso. So there are choices, or this person or this one, right? And that is um, one of the examples. And look at the next sentence we have here, the self uh, title, right? And do you remember what was the meaning about the safe and title? And also we have about self entitled, like auto titulado, that you know the best things. And also the self center. So in Spanish could be like uh, self center. In Spanish could be like a little bit, it's like a kind of egocentric, right? So, o son esto o aquello, o, o, o este o aquella, o azul o negro. So, we're going to use either and or it in Spanish. That will be the meaning. And then we have whether or it. So, who wants to help me to read whether or it? Yes, volunteer. Volunteers, whether or? Could I do it? Yes. Okay. Whether or is used to express double or double or shoes between two possible possibilities. Example. The new guys didn't know whether to quite or quick his job during his first day. I don't know where millennials are difficult to work with it or not. Okay. That is a good, a good example. So you can also check always talking about like possibilities. As you mentioned before, it's used to express doubts of choice between two possibilities. You express a doubt like, oh, what's happening with this? Or oh, this one, this one. Um, so the new guy didn't know in whether the too quick or or to keep his job during her first day. So the meaning in Spanish would be like whether is a connector that would say C, si. but this is of probability, like we're not sure about it. And the new guy didn't know whether. If, whether, es decir, él no sabía si dejar o mantener su trabajo. So you can say whether, eh, and also we have or. Si o quick the job. So you can see the, because there is a doubt if this one or this one. I don't know whether millennials are difficult to work with or not. No sé si. Los millennials son difíciles 
con quienes se pueda trabajar o no. Entonces sería sí o no. Entonces, this weather is related to a doubt, a possibility, no affirmative, it's a possibility. And also, either and or are related to choices, or this one or this one. So you have to choose, uh, in that case, a choice on that part. Uh, questions. It, is, is that clear, the, the definition of both? Or not? Tell me. Teacher. Will you repeat again? Uh, which part? Uh, whether or? Okay, whether is a possibility. It's a doubt of choice. Like, if or, it is C O. Um, the new guy didn't know whether to quit or to keep his job during his first day. El chico nuevo no sabía si, que es whether, si, dejar o, o mantener el trabajo, o dejarlo o. Entonces es como si o no. Si o tal vez. Si o puede hacer eso. Entonces, that is the real meaning about the preconjunction. So I don't know whether millennials are difficult. No sé si son difíciles. Oh no. So you also can have a doubt between two things or two possibilities. That is the difference about whether or not. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other idea, guys, about this per conjunctions? Teacher. Yep. What is the meaning of either or in Spanish? In Spanish is como decir o o. O este o aquel. O azul o negro. Thank you. O blanco o café. So there are like choices. So you present a choice between two options. Or blue or black. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, any other questions? No, easy, like a piece of cake. So, so. Okay. I just have a question in the structure and they use that either and or uh, because the verb which follows two subjects joining by or must agree with the second subject. And the first instruction, the verb, and then use either and or. And the first one is either and or, and then is the bear. It doesn't matter that the bear at the uh, the structure is doesn't matter, but it's just mm -hmm. we have to 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 choose between two options. That's it. And in the structure is the to either John or Rick, and is is the bear, and then the the complement. The complement exactly. So in that case, there is not a specific role that the bear should be at the beginning or should be between two verbs. So the context is the most important. Like the examples, millennial are after the verb be. So we used either or this one because of the context of the sentence. The sentence becomes understandable. So in that case, you can use it. And in the second case, the we can see the difference. Either John or Rick is going to prepare. So it doesn't matter because the context is clear where to use it. Like a span. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, this is the first challenge. Complete sentences using the correct pair conjunctions, either or, or whether or, and compare your answers with a partner. So we're gonna take a short time to uh, try to complete the sentences using this per conjunctions. If you have any questions or doubts related to the vocabulary, you had a freedom to ask. And I will be more than glad to help you. So we can start now. I'll give you a couple of minutes and then we will share the answers together.
Are you ready? Yes? Yes. Excellent. So we can also compare each other. What's the real part of that one? We could go with the first one. So we're going to be using the chat to respond. Number one, uh, who wants to help me? Who wants to help me to respond the first one? Who wants to be the volunteer to break the ice? Then also we can try each other. Me? Yes. The future of a company depends on whether there is an investment or not on employee training. Okay, so we're talking about a possibility, right? Yeah. Yes, a possibility uh, depending on whether it's an investment or not on employee training. So guys, do you agree with him? Uh, do you agree with him? Yes, I agree, teacher. Exactly, that's correct. So the first one is a possibility. That's why the, the vest could be whether or, right? Number two, volunteer for the number two. Me, teacher? Yes, thanks. Okay. Either the boss provides opportunities for learning or the millennials will start asking for a sh change. change. Okay, so... That is the, a very challenging situation, right? Or you do this one or this one? Okay, uh, do you agree with him? Do you seen either or? It? I agree. Yes, that's right. So in that case, uh, as we said in the previous one, we're gonna go back. So either or present a choice. So there are two choices, okay? And that's why that is the best choice. Right, next, number three, talking about millennials. Number three, volunteer. Hello. Okay, uh, number three, volunteer. Number three, teacher? Yes. Okay. Whether you decide to encourage millennials ambitions or to set boundaries for their behavior will depend on your development plan for employees. <laughs> Like a possibility. Okay. Yes. Say weather, right? Yes, weather. Uh, yeah, weather uh, uh, at the beginning, whether you decide to encourage millennial ambition or to set boundaries for their behavior will depend on your development plan for employees. Okay. And what do you think, guys, about this uh, number three? I agree. I agree. Yeah, that's okay. That makes sense. Also, the sentence, it's uh, understandable using whether or in that case. Great job. Number four, who wants to help me with that? Number four. Yes. Number four, who wants to help me? Either let them express their ideas or let's them go. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? You either let them express their, their ideas or let them go. Okay. And you either let them express their ideas or let them go. That's that sentence. Okay, what do you think about this? Sentence is okay for you. Yes, I agree. Yes. Him. Hmm. Yes. Imagine. Yeah. yeah, I was. I was actually thinking about this. The context of the sentence. You 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 let them express their ideas or let them go. Two options. Yeah. So it's like there is no choice. <laughs> Next, yeah. uh, number five. Yes. 
been in charge. Being um, in charge of millennials is difficult. You either wrap communication around respect or they will feel unappreciated. Okay. Um, they will feel unappreciated. What do you think, guys? Either or? Yes, I agree with him. Either or. This is two options. No. No. Option. You don't have option. <laughs> yeah. I, I was checking the sentence that being in charge of millennials is difficult. What do you think? Do you think that could be difficult being in charge of millennials? Imagine that you are a boss of a company and you are in charge of millennials. Do you consider that could be difficult to deal with them? I think not, teacher. As I yesterday said that this you have to, to change your mind or you have to adapt that the new generation and the technology. I think that is not shared. I think that you have to adapt in you know, the the environment that we have now and try to understand that them and try to improve the communication with them and try to uh, improve in technology because they are a technologist person. I think that is not difficult <laughs> in my I, opinion. Yeah, it's not difficult. Yeah, I, I totally understand that. I totally agree with you. What about you, Sifredo? Do you think it's easy or difficult to work with millennials? Uh, it depends, the millennial. I mean, some millennials are good people and others definitely not. And they basically complain about all. Yeah. Yeah, so I think it's, it's, it's not a big deal. So as we were saying yesterday, no matter the age, no matter the generation, the, the, the most important is the level of responsibilities people have and also the professionalisms that it's very valuable because if you are going to do something, you should do the best things. It's not you're fired. So that's why it doesn't matter. The generation, we can learn from everybody and we learn from people. We also take advantage about the people's skills that are good. Right? So we always take that. All right, the number six, who wants to help us read this part? Number six, social media. Yes. Social media has enabled millennials to be a powerful vehicle for marketing. Whether this this is for good or bad, it is still to be seen. That's, that's interesting, right? That is uh, something that we can also discuss about that. All right, just yes, that's the way uh, social media has enabled. So whether or that, what do you think? It's okay for you guys? Yes, sure, I agree. Yeah, so I think we all of us very agree. So it's, it's actually pretty simple in comparison to other pre-conjunctions. And uh, don't forget to use it, to, do, to use the difference. I, I think that most of you have done a great job today. And remember that the first one, when we use either and or, we present a choice between two possible choices, right? We present two possible choices. And whether or is used to express doubt or choice. I mean, it's like, or this one or this one. And so there is a doubt uh, between two possibilities. So you can see the difference, two choices in the first one, and the second one is like doubt or choice, depending the possibilities, because meanings are a little bit similar, but the context can help us to identify it. All right, let's continue with the next part. And uh, we are going to watch the following video. It says, watch the following video 
how to get the most from millennials and Generation C. And also, because we're talking about the, the, the Generation C, the new generations. Uh, Kevin was Generation C, right? He was saying that he was Generation C. Someone else in this class is Generation Z? Do you remember? Remember that the Generation C born in 1997 to 2012 or 2012 from, uh, from 1997 to 2012. Are you, are one of you Generation X? No one? No, nobody. Most, most of you are millennials. <laughs> okay, we have a combination between uh, Generation X, millennials, and Generation C. So in, th in this class, we have these three um, generations. Okay, so we're gonna be watching this following video related to millennials, Generation Z employees and we'll summarize the most important and express your ideas in the class but before watching the video we're going to make the second post to check the attendance list so you listen again and you say present hey carlos alberto dominguez present um, okay carlos um, uh, edwin uh, antonio quinteros present uh, Emerson Ulises Monroy. Present teacher. Uh, Jorge Antonio Sanchez. Jorge. Uh, Jose Bernardo Lopez. Present teacher. Uh, Jose Carlos Arguete. Present. Thank you. Uh, Jose Salvador Bernal. Present teacher. Uh, Jusman Atilio Serrano. Present. Eh, Juan Carlos Herrera. Eh, present teacher. Eh, Kevin Alfredo Lucero. Eh, Nelson Alberto Peraza. Present. Osman Enrique Hernández. Present. Okay. Eh, Rafael Alexander Serna. Present teacher. Eh, Ricardo Ernesto Pérez. Present teacher. Ah, uh, Cifrido Ernesto Gómez. Present. Eh, Wendy Maricela Ramirez. Eh, Mirna Elizabeth Alvarenga. Present. Y, and also we have Manuel Antonio Escamilla. Present. Thank you. Okay, I will share right now the, the link about the following video. And we're going to talk about that later. So look at the chat right now, and I will be sharing with you guys the link. So you can start now watching it, and then we're going to respond to some questions and we analyzed some valuable information here. Let's do it.
Okay, students, uh, could you, you know, listen carefully the video? Yes? Yeah. Yes, yes, teacher. It was, it was a very interesting, you know, information given by the lady, right, about the millennials. And also she took uh, some short time to, to interact about the Generation C, right, that is the next generation. And imagine in a couple of years, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about concluding the generation alpha. We're talking about 2025, 20, right? So um, I want you to tell me, what, what do you get from the video? What important points attract your attention about it? Because it talk about the challenges with um, millennials and also the opportunities and possibilities. And uh, she was saying something related to the way that everybody work, that they can also take advantage. So who wants to break the ice and uh, can tell us what you understood or what attract your attention according to what she said? Who wants to break the ice? She said mentioned uh, this generation is more educated. For this reason, the expectation of the salary of this person is high. Okay, interesting. And so in one part of the, the video, she mentioned something, she say, Digital native issue. What is the meaning? The digital native. Native issue. Related that this generation knows about technology. Everything is digital. Time ago, like the previous generations, they didn't have access to PDF vocab for information, for example, books. Now we're connected. We're native about communication. We're native about technology because we know how to manage that. Okay, thanks. Great, and also you were saying something interesting uh, related to the challenges. And I have a saying about that. Okay, um, someone else that would like to give your point of view or comment related to the video? In my case this year, I find some that for me was a little bit interesting. For example, I listen that say that millennials are always looking for a pro for a proof. Yes, they have Facebook and then they are looking each half hour if they have new reaction or something like that. They are creating a statement for WhatsApp and they are looking for if somebody is watching and what he said so if you want to get happy and millennials you have to to tell him in his job hey you are doing great as soon as possible the the most that you can because this type of people is always looking for the approbation for for the other people so if you tell him that hey you are doing great they feel more motivated i understand something like that so the approval, the approval. Yes. Yeah. But in my case, I believe that this is for the generation Z more than for millennials. That's my opinion. Yes. And also she mentioned that that um, we have to like guide them in the process in comparison to, to the previous generations, like a little bit more independent millennials in that case but generation c is like like trying to give them instructions guide them encourage them like to 
um, to do a great job, uh, just like congratulate it. I think like, I mean, when you praised someone for doing something, all generations is important because you feel happy when somebody encourages you to do that one. Like, you know, congratulations, you're doing a great job. Thank you. I'm very happy for that. So, you know, we are like praised. We feel good. And, but that is very interesting, uh, Jose, because, you know, they always needed the approval of something that they have done. Yes, I have never seen from this way. I have never imagined something like that, but it has sense. Okay, in, in your company, do, do you receive, um, um, for example, some positive word, like congratulations, you have done a great job. Do you receive this kind of positive feedbacks? Yes, but because we do our job, because we were we work focus on goals. And so if we reach it, it's because it's normal that somebody say, hey, wait. But only because the, the director is, is crossing or passing and say, hey, you're, no, no, no. yeah. When we receive uh, some words, some motivated words, is because in the real, we are doing great. Yes. Okay. However, I'd rather bonus or free days than motivated words. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> an extra bonus, a Christmas bonus coming soon. Yes. Yeah, I know. I know, obviously, that is important. Okay, hey, what? You have done a great job. Take $40. You got it. You know, you deserve it. Because that yeah. would be even better than that. But... Yes. Yeah. Sometimes they say you can take the, the afternoon from the Friday. Wow, this is amazing. And uh, yeah, there, there are some places that people take this advantage. And that is something good. It's like we say the appraisal, appraisal related to you know to motivate you because you have done a great job. So the appraisal is important. Yeah, so we totally understand that in that point that encouragement is necessary. Okay, someone else that would like to, you know, give your point of view about the video or something that attract your attention. You say that the, this generation need the uh, a lot of feedback all the time, and uh, the problem that that have a company now is the turnover because they leave the the job if they are they are not motivated or they are not to to get a promotion in short time. And she say that the coaching and mentor is the first step that you have to to do with the this generation and. Yeah, they talk about the the a lot of things, but the the most important with with the millennials or the generation C that you have to help in this skill and you have to 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 invest a lot of money in training and and then feedback. The feedback is constantly, I think, that in this kind of the person. Because they grow with a computer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, they, definitely. They are native, native with technology. Uh, yeah. Native, yeah, technological people. That's right. Okay, guys, I just want to congratulate you for the work done. So, as I said before, we all the time to learn, and this is a great conversation because we can evaluate the way how people work, respecting the generation, the ages, and also the experience that they have lived. Right. So thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. And you are dismissed. We have concluded our class. So have a beautiful night to all of you. And I hope to see you tomorrow. Thank you. Have a, have good, a good night. night. See you good tomorrow. Night. Thank you guys. Hello. Thank you. Take care.